faithful to us. Let us continue to praise, lift up your voices, and worship together. Yes, Lord, we love you. Always wanting to get closer.
we will come running in you we find belonging your love is all that can satisfy praise together. It was so exciting to see you here for service. Let us hear the message. All right, what a blessing to share this time with all of you, my friends, online, community. Some of you might be joining us for the first time, and if that's you, I'm Pastor Terry Lee, pastor here at Cornerstone Church in San Francisco. Super excited about where we're going. As we think about it, we've made it. The final day, the final Sunday of 2023. What a beautiful opportunity to position ourselves for the gift of a coming year. Today, we're gonna to be hearing from one of our pastoral teaching team members, Jonathan Arantes. Jonathan only oversees our youth department, but he's got a joyful, exuberant way of sharing the scriptures, and I know you're gonna be blessed. I wanna talk about, speaking of blessing, about the blessing of giving. Many of you are aware, but not everyone would be, that you can give your tithes, your offerings, your gifts to the church through a couple of different uh, ways, right? One is to mail it in, old school. Another is to go directly to our website. And some of you do what I do. We give through the app and you can do that as well. 2024 for us is going to be a year of witness. We've committed ourselves to an initiative. Some of you are aware of that, the Acts 1-8 initiative. It has to do with this idea of taking the message of Jesus. And really for us, it means putting some boots on the ground and working in our neighborhood, working in our city, uh, being more uh, public in the way in which we are trying to let people know about what we're doing. Specifically we're gonna focus around the area of City College in San Francisco, but it's designed honestly to, to go into other parts of the city as well. But the Acts 1-8 initiative, which not only for us has to do with um, the local city of San Francisco has this uttermost parts of the world component to it, which speaks of the digital highways. And we really want to continue to expand our footprint, to be able to minister just like we're doing right now in even better ways. We want to put out more children's content, more creative content, more original music. We also want to continue to do excellent work uh, just representing the Lord's heart. And that is something that we take very seriously. And if you want to be a part of supporting that, remember to pray for us, but also consider, hey, giving towards that. It's not too late to be able to give to the Acts 1-8 initiative. And if the Lord puts it in your heart to do that, man, we'd love for you to, to help. As far as where we're going, 2024. I'm pretty excited about it because I'll be kicking off the series next week, our New Year's series. It's built around a book that we wrote called The Faith Code. In fact, the series is called The Faith Code. It has to do with building a life of meaning and impact that's future-proof, not only for the present, but also echoing into eternity. We're gonna talk a lot about principles of growth, how we build our foundations. Just try to help get that momentum going 
so that we've got a growth mindset heading into the new year. But when it comes to the Faith Code, we've got a little clip, actually a teaser clip that we want to share with you before Jonathan shares. So here we go. Change. The world has changed as much in the first few decades of the 21st century as it did in all of the 20th. And the changes we will see in the coming years will transform the world even further. With each new technological and cultural shift, we are forced to question much of what has gone before and what will become of our lives ahead. The need to be able to pivot should never take us by surprise. Yet again and again over the years, we come back to the same question in different forms. What does it mean to live a good life? It's only by first interacting with the principles for living that Jesus used to disrupt his world that we can get an understanding of how we are to influence our own. God's plan for our lives demands growth. And the world needs us more than ever to be responsible, thoughtful, and loving in the way that we show up for it. We are the builders of the future, and we need a better way. We need a faith code. In an age when new ideas, trends, and innovations can alter the world overnight, knowing who we are in spirit, soul, mind, and body is more essential than ever. So, we invite you to join us in our journey, to figure out how to make the most of the life, gifts, and desires God has given us. This is The Faith Code. Greetings, my friends. My name is Jonathan. I'm part of the pastoral team here at Cornerstone Church, and I'm excited and thrilled that you're joining us today, the last Sunday of the year, really the last day of the year. Uh, you know, I believe the Lord has something in store for you, and I know the Lord's going to bless you for making it a priority to be here today. Before we hop into our message, I'd love just to pray over our time and invite the Lord here. So please join me. Thank you, Father God, for today. I thank you, Lord, for another day of life. I thank you, Lord, for this year, 2023, that has came and gone. I thank you for the blessings that came along with it and even the, the struggles because we were able to persevere and go through it and learn from it, Lord. God, I thank you for my friends who made it today, whether it's their first time here or they've been here before. I know you have something good in store for them. So even now, Lord, I ask that you bless us in our time here today. Lord, I ask that you give us a heart of flesh and not a heart of stone. Let us not be hardened by the words we hear today, Lord. Uh, and with that, Lord, I do ask for just an anointing over me. I ask that you bless these words that I'm about to share, that they're not mine in the end of the day, that they are yours, that they speak truth and life. So we thank you. We ask you all this in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. All right, my friends. Well, hey, you know, as I've been prepping for this sermon, I have been very excited for 2024 and just some of the things that our church are planning and our community but before I started looking onward to 2024, I wanted to spend some time to look at 2023 and just some of the things I've been thankful for. I'm also curious, what are some of the things that you're thankful for? I would love to know it down in the chat below. But some of the things I've been thankful for have been my family, my Cornerstone family, and all y'all just being able to pray for me and encourage me in this season of my life, especially during some of the hard times that I've gone through. You know, this year I turned 30 years old, so that was really epic. Uh, I became a pastor this year, which was wonderful, and what a blessing that has been um, and will be for however long the Lord desires me to be in this position. 
Last week was Christmas, and that was so beautiful just being able to be together. If you were at our Reardon campus, then you know how awesome it was to be at the candlelight service together and just beautiful. Our last series, um, Out of the Silence, has been such a beautiful one. You can go back and re-listen to it if you missed a couple. But just the story of Elizabeth and uh, Zechariah and their baby boy, John the Baptist, and just that whole journey that they went through together. What a blessing that was. And as I started thinking about just the things I've been thankful for, I also started thinking about the areas in my life where I need to grow. I know I need to grow in certain areas. And I wanted to sit with the concept of growth uh, as we move on to 2024, because 2024 can be that year of growth for us. Before I share some scripture, uh, I just wanted to give you a little update on some of my plants. Uh, for those of you who were here uh, the last time I shared, then you know that I'm a plant daddy. I said it before, I'll say it again. I have a ton of plants, over 50, and uh, they've been alive for more than two years. And I've seen some growth from the last time I shared till today. And I would love to share a couple photos with you of that. And these are just some of my plants that have been growing. And I know that maybe to some of us, it's not a big deal. We see a little leaf, a little sprout. Uh, but I'm telling you, my friend, when you're nurturing and you're caring for something and you see it grow, it's such a blessing. It's an encouragement. Uh, I don't have kids. I'm not blessed with kids just yet. God willing, one of these days. But for those parents who are out there, you know how beautiful it is to see your children grow. Right, And seeing growth for me and my plants is such a wonderful thing because it tells me that I'm doing something right. And I was able to actually learn a little bit more about plants this year. And one of the things that I learned was about the fastest growing plant in the world. I'm curious if you know what it is. If you do, comment down in the section below what it is. Or maybe if you don't, what's your guess? This plant can grow upwards of two to three feet in just a day. It's actually really amazing. And that plant is the bamboo tree. The bamboo tree is the fastest growing plant in the world. And it grows on a rate of 0 0.0002 miles per hour. <laughs> when I found that out, I didn't know what to do with it, but I thought it was neat to share. You know, and the Chinese bamboo tree is one of these unique, beautiful plants. Uh, and because it's so unique, I wanted to share a little bit about it. You know, the cool thing about these Chinese bamboo trees is if you plant a Chinese bamboo, what happens is you see no growth in five years, no visible growth, at least. Above the surface, there's nothing happening. It seems a little dormant. But what happens is after the five years, in about six months, this Chinese bamboo tree can grow upwards up to 90 feet tall. That is amazing. Once again, that's about two to three feet a day. You can literally stand and see it grow real time. That is unique. That is awesome. You know, and a lot of us would say, wow, man, this plant is so cool. Like it grew in you know, in six months, it grew 90 feet. But friends, the reality actually is that that's not true. The reality is that it actually took five years and six months for it to grow 90 feet. The first five years, as it, it seemed like nothing was happening, but under the surface, in the dirt, in the grind, in the mud, it was growing its roots deep and wide into the earth's surface to prepare itself for rapid growth. And then after the five years, we see the life come out. And sometimes our life with Jesus is the same way, where we feel like there's just this uh, chasing of after the wind and we see no growth or change in our lives in certain areas. And we ask ourselves, well, what's the point? But my friends, when we continue to press into the Lord, we will see growth happen. It's inevitable. This is, it, it just is a product of following Jesus. Growth happens. And in James chapter one, 
verses 19 to 27, there's a couple of areas that I would like to look at together where we could potentially grow in. Because this can be our year of growth. As long as we continue to press into the Lord and fix our eyes on Jesus, growth will happen. Because remember, my friends, we are all called to growth. And real growth begins with becoming more like Jesus. So let's read together. In James chapter 1, verses 19 to 27, it says this. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. So get rid of the filth, all the filth and evil in your lives, and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. That's so beautiful. Can I get an amen down in the chat below? But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you only listen to the word and don't obey it, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you hear, then God will bless you for doing it. If you claim to be religious, but don't control your tongue, you're only fooling yourself. Your religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God, the Father, means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. I love this scripture because there's so much in it. Maybe as I was reading, something stood out to you. Maybe you felt a little convicted by one or two of these things that you thought to yourself, wow, I need to grow in these areas. I know for myself, that is true. But I would like to take a moment to actually walk through some of the things that James, uh, John, uh, Jesus's brother brought out and encouraged that we must all work on these things. So the first was quick to listen. How many of us when people are sharing, we're not even listening. Maybe our minds are wandering, or maybe we're getting ready and prepping ourselves for a response, and we're not listening. A lot of the times when people are sharing from their heart, you know, they just want to be heard. And if we're not listening, they're not being heard. Slow to speak. How many of us, as we're talking in conversations, we're ready to give a response and answer, um, you know, our opinion. We don't really care about the conversation. We're just ready to prove our point. Or maybe we'll ask somebody, hey, how are you doing? Only to tell them how you're feeling. We don't really care. We're just ready. Let's not be those type of people, my friends, especially if we're calling ourselves followers of Christ. Quick to listen, slow to speak, and this last one right here in this section is slow to get angry because the anger that humans produce is not, the right, it's not part of the righteousness that God desires. You know, a lot of us, maybe some of us, are quick-tempered. We get angry off the littlest things. And in getting angry, we can potentially push people away from the Lord. If this is something we need to work on, we need to really bring this into the Lord. Father, give me a heart that's more gentle, that doesn't get angry very easily. Get rid of the filth and the evil in your lives. Be humble and accept God's word. Do what it says. Study your Bibles and meditate on God's word. Watch how we speak. That's a big one. Right? I mean, the Lord says it, scripture says, hey, how can we say we love God, bless God with our mouth, yet curse a brother and sister? These two things, may, they should not be. Care for those who are in need. 
And the last one, don't let the ways of the world corrupt us. Out of these few things that we shared here, what stands out to you? In what area do you need to work on? You know, a lot of the times when we are trying to grow, especially in these type of areas, it's hard to really see. Maybe we have to invite those around us who we know will lovingly speak life into us and say, hey, you know what, John, I think you need to work on this because I've noticed these things. Let's be humble, right, and soft-hearted. I think when we try to figure out a game plan on how to execute and come up with these goals and grow in these areas, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 3 comes into mind for me. I think it's a great example. And this is what it says. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. In other translations, it says, entraps, ensnares us. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer, the perfecter of faith. For the joy set out before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you may not grow weary in losing heart. I love this scripture because I feel like it gives us an example on how to execute our goals. The areas in my life that I want to grow in, maybe it's slow to speak, quick to listen, slow to anger, you know, the things that we just shared in James. In order to execute these things, I think this is going to help us. Because one, it talks about that there's this race marked out for us and to run it with perseverance. You know, a lot of the times we want change to happen overnight. You know, we want uh, Amazon same day shipping. I want it the same day. I want it now, right? And unfortunately, that's not how it always is. It takes time to see growth happen in our lives. And when we read this scripture and know that, hey, there's a race marked out for us and to run it with perseverance, it's an encouraging thing because it reminds us that, hey, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Imagine you had to run a marathon, 26 miles or so, and Normally, right, in a, I've never ran a marathon. I've had friends who ran marathons, and this is what they've told me, is that you need to pace yourself. Every single mile, you got to make sure that you're at a rhythm, that you don't go out of your rhythm, because that can mess you up in the long run. And that's the goal. That's how you do that. That's how you run a marathon. How you don't run a marathon is sprinting the first mile thinking, ooh, if I just get ahead of everybody, I'm just going to sprint and just exert all my energy so that I have nothing left. It's foolish. No one would do that. No one in their right mind, at least. Because that first mile, maybe two, yes, you got far, you probably passed everybody by a great deal, but you've wasted your energy. It is gone. It's not there anymore. You're not going to be able to finish that marathon now. You might get five miles, maybe 10, maybe 15, but I'm telling you, the closer to those 26, it's going to get a lot harder. So we're called to run with perseverance. So whatever goal you have in growing in the Lord, persevere, take your time, be encouraged that, hey, the Lord's started something in you and he's going to carry it to completion. Next thing that stood out to me was this idea of fixing our eyes on Jesus. And I was reminded by Peter. When Peter was walking on the water, he had his eyes fixated on Jesus. He knew his goal. He knew his motivation. He wanted to get to Jesus. But the second he took his eyes off Jesus, what happened? He sunk. He lost motivation. He got scared. He was literally in a storm and he sunk. And sometimes it's like that. Once again, what area for us in our lives are we wanting to grow? We want the Lord to move in 
And we want his encouragement, his grace, his love, his mercy to be magnified in us in. Fix our eyes on Jesus. And the next one that stood out to me was, consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you may not grow weary in losing heart. In the end of the day, the growth we want to see in our lives should come from a heart of, Lord, I want to honor you. I want to uplift you. I want people to see my life and know that you are good. And that should be our motivation. That should be the driving factor of why we do what we do. I want this year, 2024, to be a year of growth. I want to be more like you, Jesus, so that others may know you and come into a life-saving relationship with you. It's a beautiful thing. You know, some ways that I was wrestling with practical ways to grow in 2024. Um, I have three of them for us that I'd like to share. There's way more than just these three, but this is really what I feel like the Lord has placed in my heart. And the first is this. Keep your commitments to yourself so that you can keep your commitments to others. You know, a lot of time in our lives when people ask us for help or to be there to do something, the pressure of an expectation of, hey, they're relying on me has weight to us following through with our commitments. But a lot of the times when we say something to ourselves, I will get up at seven in the morning to clean. There's not, it's, at least this is what it feels like. There's not that much weight on it because no one's relying on me. So it's okay if I get up at eight or get up at nine or I don't even clean, but I save it off for another day. My friends, when we break our commitments to ourselves, that will affect how we keep our commitments to others. Second, and it goes really, really well with the first one, is set ourselves realistic goals. Now, what happens a lot of the times is we, like I said earlier, we overestimate what we can do in a day and we underestimate what we can do in a year. We say to ourselves, okay, I'm going to start. I'm going to get up at four in the morning every single day to read the Bible for an hour, then journal, and then worship before anybody else gets up. And that's a beautiful thing. Don't get me wrong. The heart behind that's so beautiful. But if we have no track record of even doing a devotional daily or even weekly, that's going to be very hard. A more realistic goal would be, okay, hey, you know what? Before I hop in the shower every day, I'm going to put an alarm for myself to read the Bible verse of the day. Okay, hey, that's something that's a little bit more realistic, right? All of us can do that. And over time, once we start building the foundation of consistency, then it could start to change. Okay, you know what? Hey, I've done this for a few weeks, a few months. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read my Bible before uh, coffee. And then the more we start building that consistency, then maybe over time it gets to the, I'm going to wake up early in the morning to be with the Lord. It's a beautiful thing. But if we don't set ourselves realistic goals that we can actually achieve, we're going to lose heart when we fail. We're going to quit because it gets hard and we're not going to even want to try anymore. You know, the last way that we can grow in 2024 is by sharing Jesus. You know, you might ask yourselves, well, how is that growing in 2024, John? I'll tell you this. One of the ways is growing in boldness. Maybe we get scared when the conversation of God comes up around certain family members or friends or coworkers. But if we can get into the rhythm of sharing Jesus with people, it'll be ingrained into our DNA. Some of the ways we can share Jesus is by sharing our Rise and Shines that Pastor Terry posts every single day on our YouTube channels or on our, uh, our app. 
You can share our online messages with friends. If there was something that you were encouraged by, send a little uh, text to a family member, a friend, a coworker, and say, hey, you know what? This stood out to me, and it blessed me, and I just want to share with you. You know, our creative team here on Cor- at Cornerstone Church is so talented in just the content that we produce for our community, whether it's the music videos or plays, uh, our kids' ministry videos, like those things can also be shared, sharing a verse of the day and so much more. What we share is magnified in us. And that's why it's so important to share Jesus. As 2024 starts to come, I encourage you, my friends, take some time today in the next coming days to really sit down and ask the Lord, invite the Lord into this time and ask him, God, where should I grow in? In what areas do I need growth? You know, maybe it's what we shared earlier. Lord, I want to be somebody who's quick to listen. Help me grow. Help me grow in learning how to be slow to speak, slow to get angry. Lord, help me get rid of the filth and the evil in my life. Lord, help me grow to be humble and accept your word when it's hard. Lord, help me do what you say, not just hear it. Help me study your word. Help me grow in wisdom and knowledge and so much more. Take some time, sit down with it, wrestle with it. Because I'm, I promise you, what you bring to the Lord today and what we want, what we grow, what we choose to offer to the Lord, He will bless it. And this time next year, 2025, I know it's long, but hey, we will see real growth happen in our lives. It might not happen overnight, but this might be your year of rapid growth, of life blooming. And even if it's not, this is your year where your roots grow deep and wide as it preps for rapid growth. My friends, I hope you are encouraged and blessed I'm excited for where we're going in 2024. In a moment, we're going to share this wonderful song. I asked the band if they could uh, sing this one for us and for us to worship together, and I hope you're blessed by it. But with that being said, I love y'all. I'm excited for where we're heading and the growth that will happen in our lives. But until then, have a good one and be blessed.
I know there's no one else for me Cause you're the one that my soul loves Now I find myself more alive than ever My life laid down for your desires Now this is freedom Holy Spirit make me more like Jesus Every day a little more like Jesus Crucify my flesh with yours that my new life might be secure Everything I do Done so I can honor you Resurrect me, sanctify me Make me into your image yeah. Your image Praise be to God, praise be to God You save me from myself God, praise be to God, a new life I've been dealt. I'll never look back, no, I can't go back, I'm yours. No, I'll never look back, no, I can't go back, I'm yours. Oh, praise be to God, praise be to God, you save me from myself. more like Jesus by the power of his spirit. You know, this coming year, it's just, it's just an amazing opportunity for us to grow, to become more like him, to lay seeds of growth, to get those roots going down. And my prayer for all of us is that we would not only start well, but that we would have a compounding momentum that would carry us through into the coming year. You know, there's so many things that we cannot control. If we've learned anything, it's to walk with humility because we cannot see the future and we do not know what this year will bring. But we can choose to position ourselves to walk in the grace and peace and love of Christ. And we can commit ourselves to pursuing growth. And that's my prayer for you. That's my prayer for me. Lord, don't let us get stuck. Instead, we thank you for the blessing of a new year and the opportunity of this first month of the year and we just want to ask you to help us to keep growing and becoming everything you want us to be. So may the Lord give you a heart that yearns for expansion and may his grace fill your life in every way because you are greatly loved. <laughs>